Hi everybody, Noel here. Welcome to my kitchen. As I uh, promised during the week, I said I'd show you how I cook my lunch most days. Um, and this time I'm going to do a, a vegetable soup. So uh, basically I'm just going to cook my lunch. It's half one now. It's a bit late for me to be having lunch. But anyway, I was out this morning. So uh, I'm basically just going to cook my lunch and I'm going to show you how I do it. Now, uh, the first thing you need to do if you're going to cook a, a healthy immunity boosting meal is have healthy immunity boosting ingredients unfortunately there's no way around that so uh, i'm a big big believer in using locally grown in season organic vegetables and i'm very fortunate in drada because quite nearby there is a farm a family farm mcnally family farm which you may be familiar with and mcnally family farm they're based in walchestown and some of you well People from Dublin may know them because they have markets in Temple Bar and they have markets in the People's Park. But they also have a farm shop. And at the moment the farm shop is open from Wednesdays to Sundays. So I drove up there this morning. We're allowed to go out for food so you're entitled to do that. It's my normal place where I go shopping. And I got my vegetables for the week. So what I have today, what I'm going to be using today is I got beetroot. Okay, I got some lovely beetroot which I've already chopped up. Okay, uh, beetroot is a super food. Um, one of the strange things about beetroot is I never liked it until I started stir frying it. I, my mother used to boil it, at, you know, a lot of people boil beetroot and I never really liked it that way. But when you stir fry it with the spices, it's actually gorgeous, you know. I got some red cabbage, I got some green cabbage, I got some parsnips, I got some baby spinach and I got some beautiful broccoli. Now all of this is grown in season on their own farm. They don't use synthetic pesticides or synthetic herbicides, so there's no glycophosph glycophosphate residue on this. Um, and I, I'm a big believer in that because what's the point in taking in nasty chemicals with your food? The, the purer you can get it, the better. I also got some um, coriander and some parsley. I'm also using some... Um, sweet potatoes which i didn't get there i bought them in the local shop you know so that's the first thing if you can't grow your own vegetables try find a local grower or a local supplier as near as possible to you that's uh, producing good high quality food there's another company called green earth organics they're based in galway and they do a box delivery system now sometimes people say well eating healthy is very expensive my vegetables for the week cost about 27 euro and that does me for the best part of the week on top of that i have maybe some rice and some dal and some spices but 27 euro so what's that that's the price of a would you get an evening meal out for 27 euro i'm not too sure probably the price of two or three takeaways so i don't know i don't feel that that's particularly expensive to have really good quality food but i suppose everybody has to make their own decision on that so that's the the, the vegetables we're, we're using i basically have two sieves i've cut up the vegetables into this one so everything's chopped up and put in there and in this one here i have two different beans i have yellow mung dal uh, and i have brown lentils so yellow mung dal Dal is the, the split part of the mung bean, it's the inner part of it. And in Ayurveda, it's very revered really because it is full of protein, okay? So this is a vegetarian meal, okay? So there's no meat in this meal, but we still need to take protein in and it's very important that we get proper protein. So yellow mung dal is full of protein and unlike most beans which cause an increase of vata now i'm not going to go into the ayurvedic terms too much but you can look it up on the website ayurveda.ie but vata is air and space okay and beans tend to have the effect of increasing gas in people but yellow mung dal actually doesn't it's it's very balancing so it's it's very good for all three doshas whether you're vata pitta or kapha and then the other thing i'm using just to have a bit of variety is uh brown lentils so they're the main ingredients that's your 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 lentils your your dal and your lentils and then that's your vegetables okay and then on top of that then what i have is the spices that we use in this so this is really what makes the big difference because it's the spices that adds the flavor to this food we're not going to be using any stock here it's just going to be the flavors that come from the spices so i have uh there's so many different things that you can use i'm using six or seven of them today so i've got black pepper really good for your digestion so black pepper i have cumin seeds in this little jar here cumin seeds i have a thing called asafoetida asafoetida is also called hindu i have two varieties of it i have a marishi ayurveda one and i have one from satnam 
and uh, this is made from the resin of, of a tree, okay, or various different trees, and it's uh, got a very strong smell off it. But fortunately, it doesn't it doesn't taste like it smells. It, it adds lovely, lovely flavor to the food. It's it's used all over Iran and India in, in the cooking. It's also very antiviral, considered to be very antiviral. So I, I cook with this a lot. It is quite strong though, so you don't need very much of it, particularly the Marishi Ayurveda one. You just need a small little pinch of it. And uh, what else I have then is uh, I'm going today. I don't use them that often, but I'm going to use a churna. So we have vata churnas and pitta churnas. I'm going to use a vata churna today. So churnas are just mixtures of spices. So generally I would have also turmeric, which I, I'm a great believer in and using in the cooking, but I actually don't have any separate turmeric, but it is contained in this particular churna. And there's various different spices contained in there. And then the um, I have rock salt as well. Now I'm not going to add rock salt into the cooking, you can use the rock salt at the end just to add flavour to the food. And rock salt I like as well because really it's only partly salt, it's come from some rocks, it's basically broken down. You're, you, you see the salt lamps that you can buy in the shops and things like that, that that's rock salt and what it does is it's, it's milled down. But the good thing about it is, is it only contains a certain percentage of salt but it contains lots of other essential minerals and, and things in it as well you know. So it's uh, I use that a lot in the cooking and it's obviously got a very salty taste. Now as for the cooking oil, for the oil that I use, well I generally use this stuff called ghee okay and ghee is a dairy product and essentially it's clarified butter. It's very easy to make, it's quite expensive to buy but it's very easy to make and maybe someday I'll do a video of how to make that but basically you make it with unsalted butter and that's all you need and a piece of cloth unsalted butter a stove and a piece of cloth but you can buy it in in Asian shops I like to get this one because it's organic it's an organic key as well so it's uh, I like and I cook with this in Ayurveda this stuff is revered absolutely revered if you ever go to do ayurvedic treatments if you ever got the opportunity in your life to do a thing called panchakarma which is a, a detoxification one of the things you have to do is drink a lot of this and if you ever get the home treatment to detox you drink a lot of this and the reason that is is because this oil has the ability to go very very deeply into the cells and it's used to get toxins out of the fat out of the fat cells in the body and why we use it for cooking is that when we put all the spices in there that then those nutrients are carried very deeply into the cells into the tissues as well and basically you know from an ayurvedic perspective the herbs the spices the foods they contain nature's intelligence and you're transferring that intelligence into your own physiology so ghee is used an awful lot it's said to help to create what's called ojas and ojas is vitality Ojas, you can also call it immunity and vitality, but it's that life force, it's that creativity, it's that dynamism, it's that sparkle that you have, it's that really strong immune system that you have, and ghee is meant to be one of the superfoods in Ayurveda that, that helps to produce that. However, as I said, it's a dairy product, and nowadays we have a lot of people that uh, are going vegan for one reason or another, and that's absolutely fine. That's a personal choice. So my other option would be for people who want a vegan meal is to use coconut oil. Okay, coconut oil also is very revered as a as a, as a cooking oil as well. So, but I wouldn't tend to use you know bad oils you're better off not using any than using bad oils okay or mixtures of oils or things like that so uh, coconut oil organic coconut oil but all coconut oil is organic really uh, that may be just a bit of a, a jargon saying it's 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 organic you don't need to spray coconut trees with anything in order to get them to grow so coconut oil or um, ghee is, is the oil that we use and um, then you have the various different ingredients there so the first thing you need to do is to wash them particularly the dal okay because dal will have can be a little bit starchy and if we wash wash the starch off the dal then it's much lighter and much easier to digest so i'll get my cameraman to well there's no need to watch me doing these but anyway i run this under the tap so you just run the dal you have to believe me i know you can't see it on the camera but uh, you just run the dal under the tap and you, it kind of runs out milky white underneath it and you just leave that run for a while and then just give it a good shake around and then just leave it over to one side and then you get all your veggies and you run them under the tap as well and the veggies can be anything whatever you like carrots if you don't you know certain things you don't like it doesn't make any difference 
I would suggest you use in season vegetables. There's a reason they're in season. And um, if you can use in season vegetables, do that. But it's up to yourself, whatever you, whatever you want to use. So you give them a washing under the tap. Okay, and then they're ready to go. Right, okay, so we'll move, get the cameraman to move the thing back. Okay, so I have a pot. The cast iron, if you have, this one is a stainless steel pot, so I'll just use that. So you start off and you put the heat up full, full glass, put it up to the, to the top level, okay? And then you get, okay, you get a cloth. Okay, thought that was going to be a disaster. Okay, so you get a cloth and you a uh, wooden spoon and you just take out a certain amount of the ghee. Okay, so maybe that and a little bit more. Okay, and then you put it on the pan. And uh, that will melt, okay? So you, you just leave that to melt. And the good thing about ghee is you can heat it up quite high. And the same with coconut oil, you can heat it to quite a high temperature. So that's on full blast, it's on full heat. And that'll start melting. The other thing that I didn't mention that I have is chopped ginger. And again, ginger is great. Ginger is very antiviral as well. And it's a digestive aid as well. It, it'll help to increase the power of your digestion. You can get root ginger anywhere. You can you can buy it in most supermarkets at this stage. So just get some, uh, some root ginger as well. So, okay. You can have some chopped tomatoes if you want. They're, they can be a little bit acidic. So if you're pitta, of pitta nature like me, probably just a small amount of that. But um, yeah, whatever it's whatever you want, you know. So, okay, so the oil starts to melt in the pan. So you let that heat up. The other thing you can do is boil a kettle of water at this stage as well. So I tend to filter the water. It would be fair if I didn't have to, but I do tend to filter the water and then fill up the kettle and boil up the kettle as well. Because we're making soup here today, so obviously we're going to be using water. A lot of Ayurvedic meals, you don't need to use water at all. And maybe I'll do another example of that on uh, another day. Okay, so that oil is, is heating up. You can hear it crackling, okay? So then I just put in some cumin seeds. Okay, you can, if it's it too hot, you can just take it off the thing, just lower the heat down a little bit. Some cumin seeds, I put in the ginger. I put in the black pepper. I put in the hingu. And I put in some vata churna as well. Okay, so that's the spices I'm going to be using, and then I stir that around. Okay, and you can see the steam coming up off it. I'm not sure if I can show you that in there. Anyway, you can see the steam coming up off it. And then what you do is, once they've cooked a little bit, and they're, you're just kind of mixing the spices in with the, in with the oil, and then you can put your, your dal in on top of that. And then mix that up. You can take it off the heat, you don't want it sticking to the pan. So you can take it off the heat and mix it around and make sure that the oil is infusing itself into all of the seeds, all of the all of the dal and the lentils. And then you just mix it around a little bit. Then you take your veggies, wash them one more time. No harm in having a little bit of water at this stage. Okay, just shake the water on there, put it in there. And then again just mix it all up. So that all the oils and the herbs are all being nicely mixed up into everything. Okay? So it's all mixed up together. Okay. Boil your kettle. Oh, I thought I had the kettle boiled, but anyway. So you don't want this to burn, you've no water in this at this stage, so just keep moving it around. Should have had the kettle boiled first, but anyway, so it's a better thing to do. 
Better not to put cold water in it. Better to use, use warm water. Okay, so we go with that. And then just top it up with water. And then put the lid on. Put it up to full glass now and we're going to bring it up to the boil. Okay, so some of you are looking at this having heart attacks because you're saying, where are the measurements? Is it a half a teaspoon of cumin seeds? How much hingu is it? How much of this? How much of that? Well, I learned this cooking in India. In Well, I've been doing Ayurvedic cooking for years, but I did an official Ayurvedic cooking course in, in Rishikesh in India in 2016. I got a diploma in Ayurvedic medicine. And there was a lot of uh, Europeans and South Americans, a lot of very, very nice people on that course. And there was a lot of Germans on the course. And when we were doing the cooking part of the um, course, there was a guy showing us how to cook. And he was uh, had the pan. He was doing basically what I'm doing there. And he was saying, we put in some of this and we put in some of that. And the Germans kept saying to him, uh, what do you mean so, some of this? How much of this? Is it a teaspoon? Is it a half a teaspoon? Is it a quarter teaspoon? Whatever it is. And he'd say, well, you could use half a teaspoon if you want. And then he'd carry on. He said, then we put in a bit of this. And again, you'd have the questions, well, how much of this? And eventually he just got fed up and he said, listen, he said, this cooking is not a science. It's an art. Okay. So I don't get hung up about quantities of different things. You can experiment for yourself and use different things as you feel appropriate. Okay. You obviously don't put in a huge amount of, of any one particular thing, especially the hingu if you have it. You just need a small little amount of the hingu. But as regards how much ginger you use, how much black pepper you use, how much cumin seeds you use, how much churna you use, just use what you feel, whatever it wants. And, and then the great thing about it is, is that every time you cook it, it's a little bit different, okay? So I'm sorry for the people that want like written out recipes with the, you know, the exact amounts, but for me, they don't exist, okay? This is just cooking. I'm just cooking my lunch here, you know? So I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not having a dinner party. And even if I was having a dinner party, I wouldn't use them anyway, okay? So just, you know, if you want to be... If you want to tie it down half a teaspoon, between half a teaspoon and a teaspoon of any one of the things, except for the hingu, in which case you just probably need about a quarter of a teaspoon of that, okay? And then what you do is you bring that to the boil. And then really there's nothing much else you have to do. Uh, now, one good thing. A lot of times, big problem with people eating good food is that they, they're out working during the day and they don't get the chance to have proper meat during the day. So they're relying on a sandwich and a bag of crisps or a takeaway or something like that. Well, the other thing you can do to get yourself out of that is you can create a flask lunch, okay? So what you need to do in order to create a flask lunch is you need to get yourself a food flask. And a food flask is just a flask that has a big mount on it, okay, for getting food in and out. And you'll get this in any uh, camping shop, and you get it in a lot of different shops. Now, what you can do now if you want it is pour some hot water into this, okay, shake it around, pour it down the sink, okay. And then transfer the ingredients that are in here right now at this stage, like it's only on a minute or two, into this food flask, making sure that you take a lot of the water along with the, the vegetables and the dal. You have a good mixture of everything, but a lot of water, okay? So it's only been cooking for about two minutes, but you transfer it into the food flask. You put the lid on the food flask, okay? And you take it to work with you. Now, assuming this is eight o'clock in the morning or half eight in the morning, by half 12, That'll be perfectly cooked. It'll cook in the food flask. So you can do this in the morning time and have this ready for your lunch at lunchtime. So there's no reason why we can't have good food. Having good food is essential for good health. It's simply essential. You can take all the shortcuts you want if you like or make excuses or whatever. But if you want good ojas, good prana in your life, then you need to be eating good food. And this is a very simple thing to do. Now it's taken me, the biggest part of preparing this meal is just preparing the vegetables, okay? And obviously I've been talking and demonstrating things here, but what does it take, how long does it take you to prepare the vegetables? If you have them, it takes you five or 10 minutes to prepare them. Chop up a bit of ginger, chop up the things, wash them in the pan, then put them on. So you could have a whole meal prepared 
in about 15 minutes, I would say, in the morning time, if you had that 15 minutes. And then, which is the length of time it'll take you to go out and get a sandwich anyway. And then you have a very healthy meal prepared for yourself at lunchtime. All you need then is, maybe you could have some chapatis or some unleavened bread or some crackers or something like that with it and some fruit for, for, for lunch. And then that's a perfect meal. In Ayurveda, it's highly recommended that you eat your main meal in the middle of the day, okay? Because in the middle of the day, there's a thing called Agni, and Agni is your digestive fire. And in the middle of the day is when the sun is at its highest, and it's also when your Agni is at its highest. So Agni is your ability to digest, it's your digestive fire. And when your digestive fire is highest, that's when you're getting the most nutrients out of your food. In actual fact, Ayurveda says it's not what you eat, it's what you digest. Now, obviously, we get the best food that we can to eat, but also our digestion has to be strong. And there's things that you can do as well in Ayurveda is if your digestion is not strong. There's, there's, there's herbs you can take before a meal, a thing called trikatu, which is made up of three peppers. That'll get your digestion going very strong. Don't be eating in between meals. You know, if you're eating in between meals, you're killing that digestive fire. So you have your breakfast in the morning if you need one. And then you have your main meal in the middle of the day and you should be hungry for that meal. That hunger is a sign that that food will be digested properly. If you're eating when you're not hungry, you're not digesting the food. You're just adding on to the fat in your body and you're not getting the nutrients out of it. Because that fire, it's like putting coal on a fire that's not properly lit. It's not going to burn properly. Whereas when the fire is roaring, you can put the coal on and it just burns it all up. So the same thing with our digestion. Our digestion should be nice and strong. So this is boiling away. So I've just lowered the heat. I just lower the heat and uh, that'll just cook away and it'll take maybe another 15 or 20 minutes for that to for that to cook now the reason one of the reasons I did this we talked about an, an immunity uh, um, boost in meal and you've got nothing but goodness in that particular meal immunity is something that um, People seem to think you're born with a certain level of immunity and then that immunity will get, go as you get older and there's basically nothing you can do about your immune system and your immunity. And to be honest, there's nothing further from the truth. Your immunity, practically everything that you do has an influence on your immunity. Practically everything that you do. If you're eating all the wrong foods, they're not good for helping boost your immunity. If you're overweight, that doesn't help with your immunity. If you're not getting proper sleep, that doesn't help with your immunity either. We need a good eight hours sleep at night time. And when you sleep properly at night time, your digestive system cleans itself out, your brain cells, everything up there. The brain has its own lymphatic system called the glial system. So toxins are taken out of there and all sorts of very important stuff goes on when we sleep at night time. And that's why we go to bed feeling tired and we wake up feeling refreshed. But most adult human beings need a good eight hour sleep. And we know that sleep is a